Federal Credit Union, the exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Our coverage is also brought to you by Ascension St. Thomas Rutherford, the official hospital partner of MTSU Athletics. Now, here is your host, the voice of the Lady Raiders, Dick Palmer. Thank you and welcome in to Rick Cancel Live. It's a Monday night in Murfreesboro. And this is where you should be. We are at the Boulevard, right across from campus, corner of uh, East Main Street and Middle Tennessee Boulevard, our favorite sports bar and grill in Murfreesboro. Uh, folks have gathered here, Coach, and uh, in numbers tonight. Uh, we got a packed house. Yeah, I, you know, I'm glad we've got these two chairs up here. We might not have a place to sit down. Well, if anybody wants them, we'll let them sit and we'll stand up, Dick. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Well... Well, welcome in, anyway, to, to Rick Ansel Live. And if you're familiar with uh, our show in the past, you never know what's going to come out. But we do have some news for you from the Lady Raiders. Jake has put together this uh, sheet with the standings. Jake, but you may want to hand some more of them out. And also, we've got some blank uh, question cards if you'd like to ask the coach a question, and we'll get to them later on. Just fill it out, bring it up here to the table, or if you don't want to get up, just uh, hold it up and wave it, and Jake will come around and pick them up. That's Jake. Jake, hold your hand up right there. That's Jake right there. Give him your questions. He'll bring them up here. All right. That's going to be coming up after the show. We do have a couple of uh, guests tonight, Coach, a couple of players that uh, we're going to be talking with. Gracie Hamby and Jada Harrison. Two good ones. And those uh, young ladies will be here. Kyle Turnerman is going to be here and do the honors on that a little bit later on. But, uh, boy, a lot different scenario outside than it was one week ago tonight, huh? Man alive, I'm telling you. My own, can you all hear me? You know, it, it, the ice and snow, but we still had a, a good crowd here, but and not good, as big as it is tonight. But good we, crowd we here. Appreciate, we appreciate, appreciate the fan base. We really do. You know, I, this is today was the first day I've, I've seen asphalt in my neighborhood in a week, and uh, that, was a, that was a pleasure to see. Well, we've got some interesting headlines for you tonight, as always, and some of these uh, you are probably familiar with, but uh, during the past week, on uh, Thursday night, in fact, Savannah Wheeler became the 10th player in Conference USA history to go over the 2,000-point mark. That was last week. And we're not finished. Savannah Wheeler also hit 13 out of 14 at the free throw line on Saturday uh, in that game, and that put her as the number one free throw shooter all time in Conference USA. I think uh, 579 was the total I remember. And I'm not finished. Savannah Wheeler is the Conference USA Player of the Week this year. This week. This week. You know, uh, she averaged 24 points a game in those two games and had all kinds of accolades. You presented her with a, uh, with a game ball before the Saturday game, I believe, to acknowledge her 2,000 points. If she keeps right, you're gonna run out of game balls. Uh, we, got, we got game balls. Don't forget Jalen Gregory also. Right. That's, that's coming up. And on Saturday, Jalen Gregory eclipsed the 1,000 point mark in her career. Jalen, junior guard out of Lafayette, Tennessee, has now joined the 1,000-point club. So I think we've got, we've got 3,000-point players in the starting lineup. We've got one 2,000. We've got Courtney 1,000. We've got Jalen now 1,000. Right. And then you've got uh, Nasia, which is pressing on that. And, you know, to me, you never know about Tamia. Tamia's having a great year. Tamia will be there before her career is over. I, I will make a, a prediction I'm not as at all worried about. And uh, of course, last week we had Anastasia as player of the week, not only in the conference, but nationally. So well, we're not through yet, Dick. The player of the week awards 
seem to uh, gravitate toward Middle Tennessee, don't they? We've had a bunch of them. I think Matt was telling me how many we had today, and it was unbelievable that what we've had. That's just since he's been here. And you go back through AC, you go back through Ebony, you go back through AJ, um, and I probably missed out on some more through there. Amber Hope, uh, we've, we've had a bunch of – in the last 20 years, we've had a bunch of player of the week. Yeah, and more to come because uh, not only do we keep getting – awards like that but we keep bringing in players who are capable of winning those awards you bring in good good recruits and give them a system give them a chance put the ball in their hand and it's up to them and that's what we've been able to do all right we're going to talk to one of those young ladies uh, later on tonight that that we'll be talking about in in those terms i'm sure in the years to come so it's been a good week for middle tennessee uh, basketball I don't know what the uh, the net is doing, Coach. You keep up with that stuff more than I do, but uh, I know we're right in the mix. Well, we won we won a game the other night against UTEP by 11, I think, and we we failed five slots from 53 or 54 to 59 or 60. We win a game Saturday by 38, and we jumped seven slots. So we're back in the lower 50s right now. So. We're the closest one to us in Western Kentucky. They're at like 140. So, you know, and then the rest of them fall behind that. So we're the only Conference USA team that is in the top 100 right now. All right. And explain to our listeners why that is important. Well, you get to the end of the year, you got a chance to get an at-large bid. And that's what we're shooting for, an at-large bid. It takes the pressure off our basketball team going to the tournament. Last year, we would have got an at-large bid regardless if we'd have won the tournament or not won the tournament. You, know, you never know what's going to happen. You just never know. So that's what we're shooting for. Plus, if you do, if you do well enough, then you got a chance to get a higher seed in the NCAA tournament. Instead of being seeded 11, then we can be seeded 5, 6, or 7. We've been as high as 5, if you remember. But anyway, um, you know, and hopefully you don't get messed on like we did last year. Colorado was uh, the fifth seed, I think, and Chris make. Uh, correct me on this. And everybody was thinking, you know, Colorado this, Colorado that. They got their team back. Last week they were ranked second in the country. They got beat one game. They'll fail to probably third or fourth now. But they had a wrong seed. They should have been in the top four, maybe even the top three last year. Yeah, and I, I checked those. Uh, I checked that Colorado result just that, about every. That messed us up. Yeah, that wrong seed messed us up. Yep. We should have never played Colorado. Colorado was was an elite team, as as we found out, and as they have proved this year with basically the same team back. Well, you go back. I looked at the stat sheet. I told Chris this. They had 17 turnovers against us. We had seven. We didn't shoot the ball particularly well. They were very aggressive, and that's the way they play. But I'd like to go back and play them again. I'd like to have that opportunity again, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. Give them a phone call. Maybe they'll uh, put us on the schedule, huh? Well, they're not going to come this way. <laughs> Let's they bring their officials. I got that. And on that happy note, we'll, <laughs> we'll take a break. We got we to gotta beg for games. Matt, Matt's on that right now, and I'm telling you, we got to – it's just an everyday process – where he's talking to a program, and they won't come to middle. Now, we'll come to them, but they don't want to come back. They want to pay us. As long as they'll – We're not We're not going to have any buy games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to, they'll come in and reward our fan base, and we'll play them. They'll come in. They're going to, they'll see a good crowd and, and uh, have a good competitive game. Well, yeah, 3,800 there Saturday. With ice on the street. Ice and snow. Yeah. Thank goodness we had Jake and uh, – for cleaning up for that, that Thursday night game. But, you know, it takes all of us. We're all in this. All right, we'll take that break now, and we'll be back. Rick Hensel Live continues after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Clear. Not feeling well and need to see a doctor? Uh, three Find minutes. the care you need now at Ascension St. Thomas. We're here with 24-7 ER care, same-day care, and walk-in urgent care for broken bones, sprains, allergies, sore throats, and more. Visit ascension.org slash St. Thomas Care to get the right care at the right place at the right time. Serving Middle Tennessee State University, Murfreesboro, and surrounding communities. It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. There aren't any cops around. 
After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I drink and drive all the time. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. Fans don't let fans drive drunk. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office, a division of the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security. Hi, this is Coach Rick Ensel. Ascend Federal Credit Union is a proud sponsor and exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Visit Ascend's branch just off campus at 2316 East Main Street or any of their three other Murfreesboro locations. You can also keep track of your accounts and deposit checks on the go with Ascend's mobile app. For a complete list of services, ATMs, and locations, visit Ascend online at ascend.org. Ascend is federally insured by the NCUA. R.J. Young is your playbook for more than just copiers. Our cutting-edge solutions cover security systems, business phones, IT services, and beyond. We've teamed up with world-class partners to save you even more through bundling services, and our dedicated specialists are your personal coaches, making sure you always have the winning strategy. Don't forget our We Make It Right guarantee. Your satisfaction is our slam dunk. Schedule your free consultation now at rjyoung.com forward slash mtsu. Nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity that could have changed your life. Maybe you're just graduating high school, or are working and need to earn a degree to advance your career. Or you aspire to be a leader, and a graduate degree can make that happen. Whether you're just starting out or retooling for the future, Middle Tennessee State University can help you get there. MTSU, the University of Opportunities. The traditional first year anniversary gift is paper. Yay! Envelopes. The traditional 10 year anniversary gift is tin or aluminum. Are there sardines in here? And the 20 year anniversary gift is the chance to win up to a million dollars. Now that's what I'm talking about. It's our anniversary, but we thought about what you'd want. The new 20th anniversary Jumbo Bucks Instant Games from the Tennessee Lottery. Game changing fun. Please play responsibly. Five, four, three. Mic's up. Welcome back in to Rick Hansel Live on this Monday night. We are at the Boulevard, our favorite sports bar, right here across from the beautiful campus of Middle Tennessee State University. Really a beautiful campus in the snow, Coach. Uh, it is. And, and Jeff, Jeff does a good job down here. I mean, he's he's a M2 alum. And he welcomes, I mean, he treats people like they should be treated coming in here. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I spend a lot of time here. After the ball games, I come down here. We eat lunch in here a couple of times a week. Uh, it's convenient, but the service is unbelievable. And that's what I'm all about, service. And the food is great. Food's good. Food's good. All right, so we are 18 games into this season. That means there's not too many left. Although we're just uh, two weeks into the conference schedule, our team is uh, 14 and four, and four and zero oh in the conference, and we've won eight out of the last nine. Now the only, the only uh, dent in the armor in that uh, streak was out at Grand Canyon in Phoenix, as uh, that was part of that uh, Conference USA. Western Athletic Conference Challenge Series. Well, that, that they taught us a big lesson. They got aggressive. They knocked down shots. We had a chance uh, in that game several times to take the lead. I think we went five possessions one time in a row and didn't score. And it was a two-point game. So uh, we just didn't get it done. They got it done, much like a Princeton. They got it done. Princeton made the plays. They came into to Murphy Center and beat us. And uh, that's all you can say. And that's kind of what Grand Canyon did. Uh, but our, our team has responded. I mean, the right now what we've got on our mind is Jacksonville. Uh, we ain't got anything else on our mind. You might think, look at their schedule, you look at their record, maybe they say, well, they haven't got a real good record. We don't care what kind of record they got. We're not taking any prisoners. When we go play them, it'd be just like we was playing Connecticut, to be honest with you. Same thing holds true when we go to FIU. We're more concerned about what we're about and getting done what we, get, what we know we can do best. And if we do, everything will work out. If we don't, it'll be a heck of a game. Well, and I can vouch for that because I go to practice a lot and and these girls and the coaches get this team ready 
like you said, just like they're playing uh, a national champion. Uh, there's hardly any difference. Well, you know, uh, several of you in here has been in our, our film sessions. I know Greg and Lisa Beatty. Greg comes to practice about every day, and he's in our film sessions. And, I mean, when we get in those film sessions, you got Nina, you got you got Kim, you got Tom, you got Matt. I mean, they're they're in there. I mean, it, it's not like we're coming in there and we're looking at movies. Our kids are taking notes. And if they don't take notes, then we'll send them on out in the gym. Uh, because, you know, it's all business. And that's, we're there to rebound. We're there to run the floor, that, there to knock down shots. And it's, we're, it's a classroom setting is what it's like. And it's and just we, that way on the road, too. Absolutely. And so, you know, and then we, we make sure that our players are involved in their studies. I just talked to Kim a minute ago about our APR. I think the last two years it's kind of been at 1,000. So that's as, that's as high as you can get. So we're pretty proud of that. And you go back, Kim Bruton is kind of over all that, making sure working with uh, with uh, Miss Counts, making sure our players are in class, and making sure they turn all their work in. I mean, it's a it's a full time job. Somebody asked me the other day. I asked me tonight. I think Greg Jones said, "What do y'all do do during the summertime?" We're busy. <laughs> we're no, not only recruiting, but camps, and then we got academics, and we got there's all kinds of little things that pops up. You do get a little break uh, in there from time to time, but for the most part, it's all business. I get more of a break than those four back there do. <laughs> and yeah. I might want to say five. Kerry would fit in that. I get more of a break than Kerry and my other coaches. Yeah, they would They would probably wholeheartedly agree with you on that. Well, every now and then, I'm on a golf course with John. He's here tonight somewhere or another, and Greg, so he's here. So I'm on the golf course a little bit. Still talking basketball, though, I bet. Now. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm as focused on that golf course as I am on the bench. Well, I, and I, I know that uh, uh, that's, a, that's a great way to relieve stress, really. Well. It, it gets pretty stressful out there on the course, but. Let me tell you something. It's, there's never a time that I'm not talking Middle Tennessee and Lady Raiders. I mean, you go look at our, at our season ticket holders. If I meet somebody at Shelbyville, I ask them, you a season ticket holder? If they're not, I say, you need to be. And more times than not, they buy our, our tickets and come to our games. And once they come to our games, they're hooked. Once you get them in the gym. Yeah, that's the, and that sometimes well, that's. And, and you got to look at our players. I mean, our players are invested in our, in our support groups, our crowd. And our, our, our supporters are invested in our players. And you can see it. It's not fake. There's too many other things in, in this world that are fake. But that's not fake. Our fan base loves our players. Our players love our fan base. Yeah, and I think that's pretty evident from uh, from what we've seen after game, particularly after games uh, when the when the fans hang around. They want to talk to the players. They want to take pictures. Dick, well, at, after a game, there's probably 150 little bitty girls yep. in our dressing room sitting in every one of our kids' laps. And when Courtney brings them together to do the, the – to, the, the middle, right. you got them all around the room in there that's doing this, this together. Yep. So, you know, that's what it's all about. Some of those young ladies will be Lady Raiders someday. Yeah, they've all got their favorite players, and uh, that's who they want to be like. Well, you can start with Larry and, and Mary Alice here, and I can go all the way back to the Jennings that's back there. Everybody here has got a favorite player. They love all the girls, yep. but every one of them has got a favorite player. I would ask you who yours is, but I don't want to put you on the hot seat. All of them. <laughs> The ones that knocks down three rebounds, takes charges, runs the floor. They're my there favorite players. There you go. All right. We'll take a break with that. Rick Ensel Live will continue on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Hey, basketball fans. This is Coach McDevitt, and I want to talk some trash. No, not about the game. I want to talk about the litter problem on our roadways. Did you know that the Tennessee Department of Transportation spends over $23 million every year just to pick up litter? There's over 100 million pieces of litter on our roadways at any given time, making our state unsightly and unsafe. Litter harms our highways, waterways, even our wildlife. So let's do something about it. Don't litter, remind others not to, and report littering when you see it. We can beat litter, but only if we're all on the same team. Join the movement today. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and go Blue Raiders. 
Blue Raider fans. With more local brews than ever before, you are sure to find a local favorite this season in the Blue Raider Beer Garden. Enjoy the thrill of the game at the Blue Raider Beer Garden and try our selection of brews from Cedar Glade Brews, May Day Brewery, or Life is Brewing. All available for your tasting pleasure in the Blue Raider Beer Garden above Section D in the Murphy Center. Thank you, Cedar Glade Brews, May Day Brewery, and Life is Brewing for your support of MTSU Athletics. Today we have two very special guests on our program introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Las Casas Drugs is a proud sponsor of Blue Raider Athletics, located at 4702 Las Casas Pike, just minutes from Murfreesboro. Las Casas Drugs strives to provide all of your pharmaceutical needs in that hometown atmosphere you deserve. Family owned and operated, Las Casas Drugs offers free delivery, immunizations, drive through window, gift shop, merchandise, and medication management programs. Come by and see how we can make a difference. And go Blue Raiders! And now for today's winning cash three and cash four numbers from the Tennessee Lottery. The first number is the number you just thought of. The second number is the number you would have picked. The third number is the day of your wedding anniversary. And the fourth number They're only is lucky numbers if you decide to play them. Cash three and cash four only from the Tennessee Lottery. Game changing fun. Please play responsibly. City Auto Murfreesboro welcomes Mitsubishi to our dealership at 1015 Bridge Avenue off Old Fort Parkway. Visit our new showroom and see the new Outlander lineup with award-winning safety features and a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty. Named number one in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power. Plug into the Power and the Outlander. Plug in hybrid and take your tailgating to a whole new level. Shop City Auto online or in person and win with Mitsubishi. Five, four, three, two, one. Mic's up. Welcome back in to Rick Answer Live for this Monday night as we are at the Boulevard Bar and Grill in Murfreesboro. And a packed house it is, too, as uh, the Raiders... We'll hit the road this week. We'll talk a little bit more with Coach Ensel about the road trip coming up later. But, uh, Coach, right now I wanted to kind of go back and, and review last week's games a little bit. And on Thursday night, UTEP came in, a team that we played twice in the regular season, once in the tournament. They beat us out there. And the closest margin of victory for either team was uh, four points, I think. They got a good program. They've got a new coach. Keith is this is her second time at UTEP. But uh all week Tom and uh, Matt, I think Matt had that scout and Tom and Matt kept telling me, Hey, they're they're pretty good. They're better than their record. We don't need to fall into this thing where they hadn't got a good record. They're better than their record. They've got size, they shoot the ball pretty good. And they're, they've got a kid or two coming off the bench that can score. Well, we had a 21-point lead, and the next thing you know, they've got they've substituted a couple of young ladies in there, and they go in there and they start knocking down threes, cut it back to eight. Yep. Now I never felt like that we were in a, in a bind to lose the game, but then uh, they our kids went back out and put the pedal to the metal, ended up closing the game at 11 points. But it wasn't the way we wanted to do that. And I felt like that we would lose some points in the net rankings on that, and we did. But, uh, you know, we got to be better than that. And that's all. And we came back on Friday. You was there. I know Greg Beatty back there was there and two or three others. But we really didn't go easy Friday. We came back in. Usually, you know, after a game, we come back in and we'll just go through the motions and alert them to what they're going to do and this and that. But we came in Friday and got after it defensively and got after it about executing our offense and, and staying on top of things. In that, and, uh, in that UTEP game, 
Anastasia got in early foul trouble oh, yeah. right off the bat. And uh, Yulia came in to relieve her, of course, and she just lit the place up. I mean, she was she was putting back shots. She was getting rebounds. Like she had nine, re nine offensive rebounds at halftime. Yep. Yeah. She had – she had actually had a double-double at halftime of the game and ended up with 16 rebounds total. Well, she, she works hard. So I was telling um, John and Mike back there a minute ago about the fact that, you know, you spend an hour and a half with Tom Hodges working on your skill sets, then you come in and go through practice for an hour and a half, and you do that for three months, you're going to get better. And that's what's happening to her right now. She's come in, she's got a, she's got good skill sets, she's got a good temperament, she wants to play. She wants to win. And so you fit her in there and you start working with her and you got Matt on the other end working with her. Hey, uh, you know, and Nina, you got Nina there as a poach coach along with Tom, and she's got better. And, you know, today Chris and me was talking about in practice how much she's come. And a lot of, not, a, not a lot of uh, new stuff either. It's just repeti repetition, repetition, repetition. Well, we know that down the stretch we're going to have to play. We're going to have to go with some size. We know that. Jalen gets in foul trouble sometimes. Uh, Tamia gets in foul trouble sometimes. We can move Courtney out to the three, and we can play the two bigs inside. We know that in the NCAA tournament, and I'm not putting the cart before the horse, we expect to be there that some, some of the problems or challenges that we've had is the size that we have to run up against. Correct. So that gives us a couple of young ladies in there that can hold their own, that can score, rebound, and run the floor. Okay, well, the Raiders were able to uh, have a good, really good third quarter uh, against UTEP and, and moved out, as Coach said, to about a 20-point lead, but then they cut it back toward the end. Good free throw shooting down the stretch will always uh, help you win a ball game. Now, on Saturday, New Mexico State came in. We hadn't seen them in a long time. They were in the, uh, they were in the Sun Belt with us, but they left and went to another conference to the WAC, I think. And, of course, we left and went to Conference USA, so we just hadn't seen New Mexico State in a long time. And uh, they came in, and uh, right off the bat, they get the first basket of the game, but then I think we score something like 20 straight. Well, you know, I don't like to, I don't like to give Western any credit on anything, <laughs> but when they, when they beat, when uh, Western got beat by them, it woke our players up because you don't win, you don't, People don't win much up there at, at Bowling Green. And we probably won more in there than, than, a lot more people, than most people have. Yep. And so that kind of woke our players up. Hey, this is a pretty good team coming in. So when, it, when they threw the ball up Saturday, we were on go. Um, I think Nina had that scout. I'm not for sure, but I think she had that scout. Yep. Her and you had Tom and you had Matt and Kim in the background, and they were focused like – as good a focus as I've seen in a long time with our team. And it showed Saturday when we started the game. Yeah, I think we hit our first five or six shots, and after that, everybody, it seemed to be contagious. Well, that's the way, that's the way uh, athletics and sports are. If you, you, you know, you get one going good, two going good, and next thing you know, the whole group's going good. And uh, it, it, it works the other way also. But, uh, you know, this bunch has been a, a pretty much of a joy to coach because they're very coachable. They want to win. Uh, there's not a one of them on there that thinks they're a prima donna. They've got a lot of awards. But now, when they go in the dressing room and they come out, it's all business. Savannah had 30 points in the game. Anastasia had her third double-double in four games. And, uh, of course, that, uh, that didn't hurt things at all. So it's uh, Middle Tennessee hitting the road next week. We'll talk with Coach about that. Get your questions in now. I've only got a couple up here. If you want, if you want to talk to the coach about something, get them up here, and uh, we'll have that coming up. We'll have our players coming up next. Kyle Turnham is going to be handling that uh, segment, and that'll be coming up right after this timeout. Rick Entz alive on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Murfreesboro Medical Clinic is proud to be the official medical group of MTSU Athletics. We all win big when we work as a team for better health. Just like MTSU's athletes and coaches, our healthcare professionals work tirelessly to make our community proud. At MMC, we really are true blue. 
MTSU is our hometown team, and your health is our mission. Visit mmclinic.com or call us at 615-893-4480. Put Lee Company on your team to keep you and your family warm this season. Their expert technicians can perform a 22-point inspection and tune-up to ensure your HVAC system is good no matter how cold it gets. Their expert technicians can perform a 22-point inspection and tune-up to ensure your HVAC system is good to go no matter how cold it gets. And while you're at it, ask them how to get endless hot water by installing an energy-efficient tankless water heater. Schedule your appointment today at LeeCompany.com or give them a call at 615-867-1000. Lee Company, all you need. The MTSU Alumni Association is proud of its more than 130,000 living alumni who are leading, teaching, entertaining, researching, flying, farming, nursing, and more worldwide. Every Blue Raider accomplishment adds value to your degree. Are you connected to the MTSU National Alumni Association? Visit mtalumni.com to share what you're doing. Update your information and see how you can be involved and informed. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Roscoe Brown is proud to be a longtime supporter of MTSU Athletics and your locally owned HVAC and plumbing company for over 80 years. Roscoe Brown has been the trusted name for heating, cooling, and plumbing for Middle Tennessee homeowners and businesses. Call 888-MY-ROSCOE to schedule your HVAC or plumbing service today. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Roscoe Brown. People you know, a name you trust. Go Blue Raiders! Roscoe Brown. RoscoeBrown.com. Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance takes great pride in supporting and treating Middle Tennessee State University athletes, providing expert treatment of injuries to bones, joints, or muscles. TOA's team of orthopedic specialists can get you back in the game. Same-day appointments and walk-ins are welcome. Injured? Visit one of our many ortho-urgent cares, or to make an appointment, call 1-855-NEED-TOA or visit www.toa.com. TOA, the official team doctor for Blue Raider Athletics. Kroger always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Kroger app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. Plus, you can earn fuel points to save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. And with a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. So you can always save big every day with our savings and rewards. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Five, four, three, two, one. Mike's up. Welcome back to the Boulevard for Rick Ensel Live. We're joined now in the player segment by Miss Gracie Hamby. Hello. Gracie, wave to the crowd. Wake them up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Now we got a little bounce. That's Good. it. Talk a little bit about your background. Okay, obviously okay. when we're interviewing, you know, last week we had three – Three guys from across the seas. Yes, yes. Today, not so much. Not so much, yeah. So I'm from Murfreesboro, born and raised. Um, went to Blackman High School. Um, <clears throat> won a state championship there my junior year. Um, yeah, and then was a walk-on here and then got on scholarship and then tore my ACL and here we are. Yeah, I was going to say, we, 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 we've got something, we've got some bad mojo going on with yes, <laughs> the injuries yes. with this group. This this is injured night, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, I is. got you. I got you. Talk about your background with basketball. When did you get started playing? Um, I started playing in about third grade, so, but it was kind of like I played every sport, so I did like softball, soccer, basketball, and then I was a gymnast as well. But then I finally just decided like, okay, basketball is my thing. Like, I like this. So then I started playing AAU, and then, yeah, just. And then I played at um, Franklin Road Christian School and then transferred to Blackman my seventh grade year because I wanted to pursue basketball more. And that was and a transition yes, in and of it itself, was, was it not? It was. It was a transition. But it was the best um, choice for me and best opportunity. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Why Middle Tennessee? Well, I've always wanted to come to MTSU. I honestly, it's been my dream school. Um, most of my family's graduated from here. Dad played football. So I just knew I wanted to come here. And um, for a little while, like my senior year, I wasn't sure if I was going to continue playing basketball. But um, I was given the opportunity, so I took that and, yeah, ran with it. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Talk about the, tra the, you know, the, the, the transition from being obviously a player on a state championship team mm -hmm. to being a walk-on. A yes. lot of people don't understand how tough that is. It's yes. not easy at all. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> and it's one of those things that uh, 
give a little background on sort of what you go through on a day-by-day -day basis as it relates to that role? Um, well, I feel like I've kind of been underdog like my whole basketball career, so it honestly wasn't that hard for me. Um, it did hurt because I was playing the post um, my junior and senior year, so that hurt my recruiting because you're not going to recruit a 5'8 forward. Like, it's just not going to happen. So, <laughs> right. um, yeah, I just um, – it was kind of just – I don't know. I was kind of like, oh, I'm a walk-on. But, like, I was given this opportunity. Like, most people don't get this opportunity. And, like, I know they hadn't had walk-ons in, like, a couple years. So, um, I was proud to accept the walk-on role. So. Well, and I think that's one of the things that a walk-on role does is it really illustrates your character as yeah. much as anything else because mm -hmm. you recognize on a night-in and night-out basis mm -hmm. that the scholarship players are going to get the bulk right, of the exactly, playing time. Yeah. <laughs> and you're still going to practice. You're mm -hmm. still lifting weights. You're still yes. doing all the things that everybody else is doing, yes. recognizing that you might not quite get as much playing time right. as you would like. Right. But, again, it speaks volumes about your character mm -hmm. because yeah. you stay the course. Yes. And now look up to Saturday yes. night. What happened Saturday I know, night? First career point. What about that? What about that? <laughs> yes, yes. And not Sorry. just and not just a great basket, but I mean, what a move! Thank you. Been working on that a little bit. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, no, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> I lost it there for a second, but thankfully I was able to pick it back up and get the left-handed scoop. <laughs> How many times have you replayed that in your mind since uh, you've done that? A couple, a couple times. I just remember coming off the screen, and I think I heard Coach Matt say. Drive it hard to the basket. So I had to do that. I had to do do what we told. So came off the ball screen in yes. Utah. Got to the elbow. Yes. A little crossover, and then the little lefty. The I mean, that was pretty nice. <laughs> yes. Now, yeah, we need to get some video up and get that. Keep that rolling. Right. right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Um, where do you see it going from here as it relates to your role? Because you know, word gets around. Heard you had a phenomenal practice today, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and uh, that's one of those types of things where sometimes that play ignites a fire. Yeah, Not exactly. that you didn't have it before, yeah, but exactly. now all of a sudden you see a little bit of the fruit yeah, to, the, to that yeah. labor. Yeah. And where do you see yourself going from here? Um, I mean, I just always try to come to practice and push myself. And even if it's on scout and um, defense, like just pushing my teammates. And so, um, yeah, it does light a fire in me, but I'm still, you know, going to work hard. And um, if I'm giving, given an opportunity, I'm going to take that. And I know just like reps, like my confidence hasn't been the best, especially coming back from an injury and stuff. But I just know like getting those reps is just really helping my confidence every day. So How hard has that been? It's been hard. It's just hard. It was hard coming back, just like knowing you're not where you want to be. But, you know, everything's a process. It takes time. And my parents remind me of that every single day. Like, Gracie, it's going to take time. Like, don't get frustrated. Like, you're going to be all right. So. Yeah, it, it, it's almost like me. You get older and your mind says, I know exactly what I want to do yeah, and, exactly. and where I'm supposed to be. And your body's going, nope, nope. not yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that is really but, difficult. Yes, it is. To try yeah. to get your body to respond. Mm -hmm. And uh, where do you, are, are you back at 100% yes, right now? Yes, I'm back 100%. Um, yeah, it honestly was a smoother transition than I was expecting. I mean, I know everybody has different experiences. Um, I mean, creds to Dr. McKissick and just all my um, trainers, Chandler, and then, of course, Mark. But they really got me strong and, like, confident. I had no um, – I really didn't have any limitations. Like, I just felt like I could go full swing. So And that's yeah. really important. Yeah, it is very important. The last yes. thing you want to have is doubt in your yes, head exactly. about, you know, can I go, what can I do, right. and to be able to – and to me, when you go out there with that doubt is when you probably get hurt get again hurt. Yes, as opposed exactly. to just going full speed mm -hmm. and now you're not even thinking about outside of just – lugging that thing around right, right exactly yeah hopefully i can get rid of the brace here soon in the summer or something but. what are we what are we going to do with the brace when we get rid of it i mean are we going to bronze it or are we going to bury uh, it what are we going to do with probably that thing? Bury, it. bury it yeah i got that <laughs> yes. i can believe that too that's exactly bury what i would want to do yeah, exactly well guys let's give her a great hand for gracie hamby <laughs> great you. basket the other night great practice today big things on the way yes congratulations <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much and now we'll bring in miss jada I'm going to let you do that. Can you get that on? All right, now I'm going to move this up. There we go. Jada Harrison, everyone. And Jada, uh, you know, one of those types of things where you came in with a completely different set of circumstances. Obviously, talk about your career in high school because it was quite uh, quite the career. Um, to state championships, um, 
Miss Basketball finalist twice. Uh, Miss Basketball. That's not bad. Not bad. <laughs> That's what we call adequate, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and same question to a certain degree. When did you know? When did you get started? When did basketball grab you? Maybe when I was like two or three years old. How how did that happen? Well, I have four older siblings, so they played a lot, which you know made me want to play with them. And I had to get tough yeah. to be able to play with them. So a they, lot of that. Yeah, they didn't give you any ground, did they? No, no, not at all. And it speaks to the toughness that you've got now that you've gone through that, you know, from the time that you were born. So you started when you were two or three. And then talk about how it sort of evolved from there. Start playing, what, youth league, junior pro, whatever the youth case? Youth league. Youth league. Youth league. And then I actually played on an AAU team with boys. Uh, fourth grade, I'll say. Um, I actually played a lot. You know, they weren't as tough. As best player know. without question, right? Yeah, best player. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Will they admit that? No. No, never. you know guys won't admit that, right? Never. Exactly. So, again, decorated high school career. And then you have the opportunity to be recruited, obviously, by X number of people. Middle Tennessee stuck out. Why? Well, from the day I stepped foot on campus, I, I knew it was it. Um, above any SEC school, ACC, whatever, this is the place I was supposed to be, and I knew it. You know, you've always heard that saying, you can get there from here. There's no question that you can get anywhere you want to go from Middle Tennessee, not only from a basketball standpoint, but from an academic standpoint. Academically, what are you, what are you interested in? I'm uh, majoring in construction management. Are you really? Yes, sir. What would you like to do for a career after basketball is over with? Honestly, go pro. That doesn't work out, and then I have something to fall back on. Okay, so if Always. we don't if we don't go pro, what what, what are we going to do at that point? Honestly, I have no idea. Okay, that's all right. Make money, right? <laughs> Make money. Whatever that takes, right? All right. Unfortunately, obviously, the, the the injury bug has not been kind to you. How tough has it been to deal with the injuries that you've had because you've not only sustained one, but then you had a reoccurrence. So talk about that a little bit. Um, it stings, honestly. You know, after we beat Tennessee down in Huntsville, I called my mom crying on the phone because it hurt so bad that I couldn't be out there to, you know, play with my team. And that's the game I want to play in. That That is the game. Everybody watches. Great atmosphere. Um, it hurts having to sit back and watch all the time. Practices, games, just even preparing mm -hmm. for the games. It, it hurts that I can't be a part of it. Well, to that end, where do you see – because everybody's got a role. And coaches always talk about find a way to have an impact on the game. You can still do that from your role. How do you do that on a daily basis? Uh, just having high energy in practices or any time I can. If you see a player having a rough practice, a little arm around, a little, little pep gotta, talk, something along those lines. You got to tell them, hey, it's okay, it's all mental. You little, got it. little foot in the rear any, any time? No, no, no. No, none of that? Just all I, positive I, stuff, I, right? I can't do that can't yet. Can't do that yet? Not okay. Yet, not yet. Okay. Uh, but uh, maybe one of these days, right? Maybe one of these days. What's your prognosis as of right now in terms of your recovery? Um, honestly, have no I, – I can't tell you how long it's going to take. Um just keep scheduling appointments, seeing where I'm at. Um, right now, I have an appointment on January 31st. So, at my appointment, we'll see where I'm at from there. And hopefully we'll get good news and have ourselves ready to roll from there. Hopefully. Yeah. You had, again, the great high school career, but there is still a transition, no matter how good you were in high school, to the collegiate level. Talk about that transition between that decorated high school career and playing at this level. Well, the biggest transition for me is the mental aspect. I've got the physical aspect. Uh, mental, you know, just learning plays and learning how different colleges from high school as far as the speed. And there, there's a huge difference. But just me being able to sit back and watch practices, games, I'm kind of able to, you know, fill the coaches out as well too. So knowing – you know, that I have to be tough mm -hmm. and mentally strong. Well, helps. and obviously playing the position that you play, you find yourself wanting to be the quarterback on the floor at the point guard position. So you want to be an extension of your coaches. And that's, you know, I don't know if I want to call it a positive, but let's call it a positive. You've had the ability during your practices now 
that you are with the coaches basically the entire time in practice and you go around from one coach to another. And uh, have you used that to your advantage? Yes, I have. Uh, See I'm the really, game a different way? Yes, I'm really around Coach Kim a lot, usually. You know, just asking her questions about the plays or, you know, actually when uh, – my first, my first, after my first surgery when I was coming back, I was literally following her around like a dog, just trying to learn the plays. And, um, yeah, coach was like, yeah, we're going to have to fast track her, Kim. So, yeah, I was around her a lot. Well, in uh, there with her in her office, just trying to learn the plays. And one of the things that's interesting that you talk about chemistry with your players, but there's also chemistry with coaches as well. And – each coach here has so many strengths, but they've all got different strengths, don't they? Yes, sir. Uh, you see yourself ever going into coaching by any chance? Uh, maybe. I've actually heard that a lot, that I probably need to someday. So that will probably be something I do that's later that, on down That's the line. that point guard thing, maybe coming back out, you know, where you get in there and you go, hey, look, I've already, you know, I'm have already, i out here taking care of business on the floor, now I take care of business off the floor. On the floor, you got to be a second coach. to Your, your teammates look up to you, so – as a point guard, you got to be like a second coach out there and a leader. Yeah, you've got to be the major communicator. And I think that's one of the things that when you watch this basketball team, to me, if I had to pick out one uh, intangible, this is a team that communicates at a really high level. And you it doesn't make to. any difference who's on the floor, but there's a lot of talking going on out there. You have to. You just want to make sure everybody's on the same page because – Four people know what they're doing, and one person doesn't. It could break down the whole offense or defense, whatever it is. Absolutely. Well, I know I've had a lot. Of, I've, I've had the good fortune of getting to know you this year, spent a lot of time with you back during the summer, during the fall, during the, the winter, talking, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, we're just anxious to see you out there, really, really anxious, because I know both of you are sort of going through that at the same time. So, guys, let's give it up for Jada. And we will be back with Rick Ensel live, live from the Boulevard on the Blue Raider Sports Network. Hey, basketball fans, this is Coach McDevitt, and I want to talk some trash. No, not about the game. I want to talk about the litter problem on our roadways. Did you know that the Tennessee Department of Transportation spends over $23 million every year just to pick up litter? There's over 100 million pieces of litter on our roadways at any given time, making our state unsightly and unsafe. Litter harms our highways, waterways, even our wildlife. So let's do something about it. Don't litter, remind others not to, and report littering when you see it. We can beat litter, but only if we're all on the same team. Join the movement today. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and go Blue Raiders. MT Dining is eating made easy. With more than 19 dining locations, you will never run out of variety on campus. Whether it's Chick-fil-A, Subway, or Starbucks, we've got the brands you love right here. Need a quick snack or scantron? Stop by one of the six pods on campus and try out MT Dining's new farm-to-fork experience. Farmer's Market, now open. Located in the Student Union. Visit mtdining.com for more information or visit our office in the Keithley University Center, room 202. Blue Raider fans, with more local brews than ever before, you are sure to find a local favorite this season in the Blue Raider Beer Garden. Enjoy the thrill of the game at the Blue Raider Beer Garden and try our selection of brews from Cedar Glade Brews, May Day Brewery, or Life is Brewing. All available for your tasting pleasure in the Blue Raider Beer Garden above Section D in the Murphy Center. Thank you, Cedar Glade Brews, May Day Brewery, and Life is Brewing for your support of MTSU Athletics. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and makes the competition speechless. Greatness starts here with a built Ford Tough F-150 at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GVWR. Hello class, I'm from the Tennessee Lottery and your professor for the next 30 seconds. So where do proceeds from playing the Tennessee Lottery go? If you answered education, you're at the top of your class. The Tennessee Lottery has raised more than $7 billion for education programs like Hope Scholarships, Tennessee Promise, and much more. Now for some easy homework, go to tnlottery.com and see how the Tennessee Lottery helps students. Not feeling well and need to see a doctor? Find the care you need now at Ascension St. Thomas. We're here with 24-7 ER care, 
same day care, and walk in urgent care for broken bones, sprains, allergies, sore throats, and more. Visit ascension.org slash St. Thomas Care to get the right care at the right place at the right time. Serving Middle Tennessee State University, Murfreesboro, and surrounding communities. Five, four, three, two, one, mic seven. And welcome back in to Rick Ensel Live on this Monday night, coming to you from the Boulevard Bar and Grill. A little housekeeping work, Coach, before we uh, get into this next segment. We want you to accomplish your vision for your personal or business finances with First Vision Bank. With dedicated banking professionals, products to fit your goals, and advanced financial management tools, your vision is their mission, First Vision Bank. A couple of very fine young ladies, uh, just left the table up here. So thanks to Kyle for doing a good job on the interviews, and uh, the girls were great. Two good ones, two good ones. Uh, Gracie is, uh, she's not a walk-on anymore. Uh, after the first, I don't know, month, month and a half, I saw she really, really was working hard. And I went in with the coaches, and we made the decision that we was going to put her on scholarship. And then shortly after that, she went down with her knee injury. And then she went down because she was hustling. Uh, very seldom do you see anybody else get hurt, but she got hurt because she's busting it going to the rim. Uh, she got she got some playing time the other day. We don't give playing time, and I think everybody in here knows that. There's a lot of people in here where you wouldn't need to play everybody. No, I play the. I don't give playing time. You you get your playing time in practice, and if you're getting after it in practice, you'll get playing time. Well. The last couple of weeks, she's really been getting after it. So Saturday, Matt put her in. I had no problem with that, and you saw what happened. Uh, when she gets that brace off, she gets a little bit more sure of herself. Uh, you're going to see some good things out of her. We're very proud to have her. Uh, Jada, same situation. She came in the very first practice this year. She was dominant. Uh, she, that, I, she's the only freshman I've ever had in my 20 years that made green light. That's a drill we run every day. She made it the first time. That never happened. So I thought to myself, mm, hmm. yeah, this is going to this. I didn't say anything, but I went home talking to myself and told Deb and called Matt and was excited. Shortly after that, I got a call where she going to get checked out at the doctor. She had, it was kind of hurting her, found out she had been playing with a bone that we could have broke, that we could have got fixed in April if we knew about it. Yeah. So we didn't know about it. So then when she came back, you know, who knows what happened. But uh, right now she feels good. We're very happy to have her. She's going to be a great one. Both of them are going to be good players. I can tell you right now, they're going to feel right in like all the Lady Raiders have done in the past. Okay, we're going to take our final break. Got some questions for the coach coming up next on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Clear. Roscoe Brown is proud to be a longtime supporter of MTSU Athletics and your locally owned HVAC and plumbing company for over 80 years. Roscoe Brown has been the trusted name for heating, cooling, and plumbing for Middle Tennessee homeowners and businesses. Call 888-MY-ROSCOE to schedule your HVAC or plumbing service today. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Roscoe Brown. People you know, a name you trust. Go Blue Raiders. Roscoe Brown. RoscoeBrown.com. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and makes the competition speechless. Greatness starts here with a built for tough F-150 at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GVWR. Today, we have two very special guests on our program. Introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine-free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip-hop could be hop-hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. 
When you make the right decision, it feels good, like picking the perfect accent rug or choosing a good night's sleep over an all-night crime show binge. It feels really good to make the right insurance decision, too. That's why State Farm is here, to help you select the right protection at the right price. Hello, I'm State Farm agent Deb Insel, and I'll make sure that you understand your State Farm coverages so you'll know what to expect if the unexpected happens. With State Farm, it's easy to make the right choice. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Five, four, three, two, one. Mike's up. And welcome back in for the final time to Rick Hensel Live, coming to you from the Boulevard here in Murfreesboro. And uh, we've got two or three minutes left, Coach. Time to uh, get in a couple of quick questions. I've got a question here from Freddie. He says, how's recruiting going uh, for the next two years? We talk about recruiting about three, three days a week. We're up, you don't recruit. you got to recruit year-round. I've got the best recruiter in the country, bar none. He happens to be my son, but he is the best recruiter in the country. He's got behind him there Kim Bruton, Nina Davis, and Tom Hodges. That, that They stay right on top of it. When we were in Dallas, or really in Houston, uh, he came to me and said, hey, we got after practice, we got to drive to Dallas. I said, how far is it? Three hours. So we drove up to Dallas to watch a young lady. Looks like we might get her. And then back to Houston, got back late, but that's him. He's recruiting constantly. Uh, this, to, this class two years from now is going to be pretty big, the 25 class. So we're right on top of everything. I'm real, real happy with what's going Good on deal. there. What's the biggest challenge in playing a team like uh, Jacksonville State who plays 13 players over 13 or 15 minutes? Um, you know, that's all power to them. But our kids, if you come to our practices, you'll see our – Young ladies, they'll go for two hours, hour and a half. We'll probably go our first 30 minutes without taking a break, maybe 40 minutes. The game's 40 minutes long. So when we start up with our drills, we go about 40 minutes before we take that first break. And there's a reason for that. Then we take that break, and then we're back at it maybe another 30, 40 minutes. Big, biggest challenge might be the guy trying to call the game to – Get those revolving door substitutions in and out. Well, that's your problem, Dick. <laughs> and then I'll go something else about the the Next Level Club, which many of you in here are part of the Next Level Club, and Chris Massaro. They allow us to use. We got uh, we got a couple of different uh, uh, internet sites that we have to use. It costs us about fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, I think, on that. We're able to do the very same thing that Tennessee does, Vanderbilt does, Georgia does. And again, it comes back to our administration believing in, in women's basketball, women's sports, and allowing us to do that. So we know every dribble, every pass, every drop step, every swim down that's taking place on every game in the country. So, you know, you people make that possible for us to have that type of uh, – organization to go with with our coaches makes it a lot easier on them all right closing out uh, coach you got about a minute here road trip next week jacksonville state leave in the morning for that one and then uh, back home and then go back on the road to florida on uh, friday friday we'll leave out 9 30 in the morning drive down practice get them in bed get up the next day and play the game and drive back in practice thursday here and then friday morning we're headed out to miami again and right now, FIU, they played Western Thursday night, I believe. But FIU is undefeated. We're undefeated. Western's lost one game. So you're going to see a lot of things take place in the next, next two or three games. All right, looking forward to that. And hope you folks will join us on the Blue Raider Network for all the action if you can't make the road trip. That's going to do it for this week. Coach Rick Ensel. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Rick Ensel Live will be back at this same time next Monday. Stay tuned now. Nick McDavid, Coach of the Lady Ra or of the Raiders and uh, Chip Walters coming up next on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield.
This has been Rick Incel Live, presented by Ascend Federal Credit Union, the exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Our coverage is also brought to you by Ascension St. Thomas Rutherford, the official hospital partner of MTSU Athletics. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation of the Blue Raider Network. Okay, Talik. Yes, sir. I'm here. All right, did he get out early or on time? Uh, he got out on time. Okay, good. We get ten seconds. On the Blue Raider Network, from Learfield, welcome to Nick McDevitt Live. Blue Raider Basketball is presented by Bud Light. It's for the fans. Ascend Federal Credit Union, the exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. And by Ascension St. Thomas Rutherford, the official hospital partner of MTSU Athletics. Now, here is your host, the voice of the Blue Raiders, Chip Walters. Like the Welcome into the Boulevard on this Monday night. Glad to have you with us for Nick McDevitt Live as we talk Blue Raider basketball for the next hour. The uh, end of the second week of the conference race. Now we're moving into the third week of conference play of what is a 16-game double round robin schedule within uh, Conference USA. We are at the Boulevard live from the Boulevard, our favorite sports bar, right across from campus at the corner of Middle Tennessee and East Main here in the borough. And uh, Coach Nick McDevitt uh, joining us. We will have uh, a player guest coming up later on tonight as well, Trey Green, who had a great uh, night in Las Cruces, New Mexico on Saturday, will be our guest here in a bit. And uh, Coach McDevitt, how, yes, how are you? Doing better now. Yep. Uh, how was your How was your dinner? It was very good. It looked really good. I, I love it. It's the, <laughs> the honey crispy chicken salad. Yep. I, I about every other time I get it. My wife would tell you I'm a creature of habit when it comes to food. When I find out what I like, I, I just go back to the well. Yeah. And it, it treats me well every time. Your ball club uh, went to uh, to the farthest outpost of Conference USA this past week to take on uh, UTEP and New Mexico State. Uh, interesting, you know, every, every program has its own uh, story about where they are at this moment and how things are going. UTEP, third year under Joe Golding. Uh, if I'm correct, I'd have to go back and look. In, with, with the portal going around, we ha we've seen uh, one, I think it was UTEP had a player who started there left, went to two other places, and was back at UTEP. And uh, Tay Hardy. Tay Hardy, who played at Southern, Southern Miss, Miss and is now at, at UTEP. And then at New Mexico State, Jordan Rawls, who uh, previously was at Western Kentucky. And prior at to Western that. Western Kentucky, Georgia State, Georgia State. Western, back to Western Kentucky. Oh, he, th he went back right. to Western Kentucky. And now he's out at New Mexico State. So, We've seen Jordan Rawls wearing all kinds of colors. Yeah, and uh, I will – let me see. I can pull up right here. Just from New Mexico – I'm not going to name names here, but just uh, – in, in their situation, they had to start from scratch. Uh, basically shut their program down last year, restart it. But here we have uh, one that it was started at UTEP, went to Kansas State, then Sam Houston, then New Mexico State. You got – Rawls. Yeah, that's Eziagu, who we had played previously when he was at UTEP. Uh, you have uh, Jordan Rawls, who we talked about was at uh, Georgia State, Western, and Western uh, second time. Uh, Northeastern State out of Louisiana. Here's one that started at East Carolina, then UCF. then Brandon Suggs. Yep. Then uh, Tanaj Petaway didn't play. Femi Adukale. Adukale was he started at Pitt, then Seton Hall, and then New Mexico State. Uh, 
Then you have uh, uh, Robert Carpenter, who uh, who got hot in the second half. He was a uh, St. Bonaventure, Mississippi Valley transfer. So they they really had to go hard into the transfer portal to put their team together. So it, it's and, and Jason Hooten, speaking of transfer portal, went from Sam Houston to New Mexico State. And speaking of New Mexico State, their whole athletic department went portal and, and went from uh, the WAC into Conference Cover USA. USA. That's correct. So, uh, you know, from coaches and, and athletic departments, the players, uh, all new. And, uh, you know, good for, for – for, Jason to be able to build his team now. Nowadays, you can build it faster than you could pre-transfer uh, portal. Yeah. You know, a couple years ago, uh, if you took transfers, they had to sit out a year, uh, which meant in the short term, you it's going to have to be either high school players or junior college players. And now uh, he's got a team full of, uh, you know, four-year guys that have been at multiple schools. So they're older, they're veteran, and, and you can see that when you watch them play, particularly up close. They're, they're big, strong, physical, grown men. And yeah. uh, you just couldn't do that uh, two or three years ago. So, uh, you know, they've got a good club. And the portal is, is a, a never-ending storyline right now uh, from, you know, from week to week how a team builds itself. You see uh, teams who will may go into the portal and – get a young get younger players they went for age to get to try to be good right off the bat with when they had to start from scratch yeah i just think uh jason was smart enough to see early that to be a good team in a league like this you better be old and the portal and junior college that route combined allows you to be old quickly and uh generally speaking this isn't a league that you you gonna lean real heavily on young guys, you know when when you're in uh, you know some of the Power Five conferences you can lean a little heavier on your freshmen because th- they're probably the most talented players in the building. You know they're one and done pros, uh, not so much uh, generally outside of just a handful of programs. And uh, New Mexico State, along with a lot of the rest of us in in this league. Uh, you, you you try to lean heavier on your veterans. Yep, and uh, looking back at UTEP, Joe Golding has uh, dipped his toe in at Buffalo, Southern Miss, Colorado State, uh, Stephen F. Austin, George Mason, and East Carolina to put their roster together this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a lot of new faces at, in, in both programs. So uh, it's, it's allowed them to be uh, – really just build their team the way both see fit in a short amount of time. Yeah. Now, talking about that trip in particular, I was talking to Coach Ensel about this prior to his show a little bit earlier, that now that New Mexico State is in the league, that trip is a little bit easier. Yeah. Uh, because you get there and you you stay, basically, you don't stay in the same hotel, but you're only – 40 minutes from El Paso to Las Cruces, whereas San Antonio, San Antonio and El Paso, you our, our, tr- our trip, our trip when that was the swing, you flew Nashville to Dallas, Dallas to El Paso, El Paso to Dallas, Dallas to San Antonio, San Antonio to Dallas, Dallas home. That's what <laughs> that, 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 that is it, correct. It, it went from being the absolute hardest trip to one that is one of the more manageable. If you get out on time. If, if you get out on time, it, it all sounds good. You know, we, once, once you get out there, uh, the two towns are 45 minutes apart. Uh, because of the weather last week, uh, we have a travel party of 30, and 17 of us managed to make the trip uh, the day before the game. Uh, the remaining 13 managed to get there about two hours before tip uh, against UTEP. Uh, we, we had to split our crew up. So our first, you know, our managers, our GAs, four of our players, uh, some of the coaches, uh, this man right here, Chip Walters, <laughs> were all on uh, day number two travel and managed to get there uh, just in time. Our, our bus picked up the second group of 13 about uh, two hours, 15 minutes before tip, yep. uh, ran straight to the hotel, picked up us, or else we would have been – ubering over to the game uh, but they came picked us up and uh, we were finally one big group uh, about an, an hour and 45 minutes before tip 
the rest of it was uh, went pretty smooth, but uh, it was interesting getting out there. I well, mean, really, the the day before we were sitting in my office, uh, my director of basketball operations, uh, Rob Burlingham, uh, the athletic director, Chris Massaro, came in and we started – trying to figure out how we could get everybody out here because it wasn't just a delay. We were th that, that we were 30 a, minutes from leaving campus when the flight got canceled. Correct. We so. were 30 minutes away. I mean, the bus was there. Most of our stuff was already on the bus, and it, it didn't get delayed. It got canceled. Yeah. And so trying to find uh, that many seats on any flight, uh, and they couldn't get us out anywhere. Atlanta. I mean, we tried everything. Yeah. Knoxville, Memphis, Huntsville, Atlanta. Birmingham, you you name it, we were looking for flights. And so the way it worked they out, they just weren't there. Yeah, the way it worked out, the the night, the night, the seventeen individuals, the uh, Co Mo coach McDevitt and that crew, you, you all ended up going through Austin and getting to El Paso about ten o'clock or so uh, Wednesday night. The rest of us left at eleven thirty on Thursday and got, as you mentioned, landed. Right at three hours ahead of ahead of the game, but of course you have to go wait on luggage and all of that, and so we all ended up getting to the arena. <clears throat> uh, right, at, I got the, I had a some a friend of mine out there pick me up and took me straight to the arena to get set up, and so when you all got there, I could then do my pre-recorded interviews. So uh, I got there, was set up and ready to go, and you all got there about hour and forty-five minutes uh, prior to tip-off, but. As I mentioned to you on the pregame show before the UTEP game, the couple of things that that we did get out of COVID were, number one, Zoom calls, and number two, the ability to pivot without absolutely freaking out. Uh, that, that was it. You know, we, we've, we've been there before where all of a sudden uh, a game gets moved, canceled, somebody – uh, is warming up. You find out they got a positive test, and you got to pull them off the floor. Um, you know, we, we saw it all a couple years ago with through COVID. So uh, a canceled flight and having to figure that out seemed uh, not quite so uh, cumbersome and, and bothersome that it might have uh, four or five years ago. Especially once there was a once an, an answer revealed itself that that made it uh, as far oh. as that made it a little bit better yeah, and fortunately we, once that happened everybody's flights were on time yeah we we got out of here and uh, got back late last night about 24 hours after the game yep got home i walked in my house about eight o'clock last night yesterday we went uh we had two buses two planes three airports and 1400 miles yes and, we did in nine hours and when i got up this so, morning my body it. told me that too <laughs> mine That's is right. kind of telling me right now <laughs> We are here at the Boulevard tonight. We'll take a break and get uh, into our, the two games over the weekend. Uh, we'll talk about the matchup with UTEP when we return here on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Not feeling well and need to see a doctor? Find the care you need now at Ascension St. Thomas. We're here with 24-7 ER care, same-day care, and walk-in urgent care for broken bones, sprains, allergies, sore throats, and more. Visit ascension.org slash St. Thomas Care to get the right care at the right place at the right time. Serving Middle Tennessee State University, Murfreesboro, and surrounding communities. Roscoe Brown is proud to be a longtime supporter of MTSU Athletics and your locally owned HVAC and plumbing company for over 80 years. Roscoe Brown has been the trusted name for heating, cooling, and plumbing for Middle Tennessee homeowners and businesses. Call 888-MY-ROSCOE to schedule your HVAC or plumbing service today. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Roscoe Brown. People you know, a name you trust. Go Blue Raiders. Roscoe Brown. RoscoeBrown.com. Put Lee Company on your team to keep you and your family warm this season. Their expert technicians can perform a 22-point inspection and tune-up to ensure your HVAC system is good no matter how cold it gets. Their expert technicians can perform a 22-point inspection and tune-up to ensure your HVAC system is good to go no matter how cold it gets. And while you're at it, ask them how to get endless hot water by installing an energy-efficient tankless water heater. Schedule your appointment today at LeeCompany.com or give them a call at 615-867-1000. Lee Company, all you need. Nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity that could have changed your life. Maybe you're just graduating high school, or are working and need to earn a degree to advance your career. Or you aspire to be a leader, and a graduate degree can make that happen. 
Whether you're just starting out or retooling for the future, Middle Tennessee State University can help you get there. MTSU, the University of Opportunities. Hey basketball fans, this is Coach McDevitt, and I want to talk some trash. No, not about the game. I want to talk about the litter problem on our roadways. Did you know that the Tennessee Department of Transportation spends over $23 million every year just to pick up litter? There's over 100 million pieces of litter on our roadways at any given time, making our state unsightly and unsafe. Litter harms our highways, waterways, even our wildlife. So let's do something about it. Don't litter, remind others not to, and report littering when you see it. We can beat litter, but only if we're all on the same team. Join the movement today. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and go Blue Raiders. The traditional first year anniversary gift is paper. Yay! Envelopes. The traditional 10 year anniversary gift is tin or aluminum. Are there sardines in here? And the 20 year anniversary gift is the chance to win up to a million dollars. Now that's what I'm talking about. It's our anniversary, but we thought about what you'd want. The new 20th anniversary Jumbo Bucks Instant Games from the Tennessee Lottery. Game changing fun. Please play responsibly. Five, four, three, two, one. Mic's up. Welcome back into the Boulevard tonight for Nick McDevitt Live. Glad to have you with us this evening. Our show is brought to you in part by First Vision Bank. Accomplish your vision for your personal or business finances with First Vision Bank. With dedicated banking professionals, products to fit your goals, and advanced financial management tools, your vision is their mission. FVB.Bank, FDIC, equal housing lender. Coach, first stop on this trip was UTEP and playing at the Haskins Center. A lot of history in both of those programs on that road trip. The UTEP game ended up being a, a 73-59 win by the Miners that had one of the more unusual stat lines uh, of, of any game you could have this year. Your ball club shot it fairly well, out-rebounded New Mexico State, or out-rebounded UTEP by 13. And and then, but could, did not take care of the ball as well as you'd like. No, we we coughed it up too much that night to to really beat anybody. Um, we just were uh, not careless, but just um, you know, we talked to our players a lot about just playing with an edge. You know, we we guard hard, we play hard, and then it's it's kind of like the the old football adage is your your football your defensive t uh, side of the ball's out there. Uh, playing hard, getting stops, forces a, a, a punt, and then you throw it right back to them and send your defense right back out onto the field. Uh, pretty soon, uh, you know, your defense is going to crack. And that, that was really us in that game. We, we shot it well. We out-rebounded them by 13. Uh, but when you turn it over that much, even a team that's shooting it poor, getting that many more opportunities than you to shoot the ball – uh, the math just doesn't work out, and uh, that that was the story of the game that night. You know, there were times where uh, we we just weren't organized offensively, and that's what UTEP does. I mean, they, you, coming into the game, uh, that was a concern of ours is we've turned it over too much this season, and that's just kind of been a, a Achilles heel of ours. And for UTEP, that is their strength. Uh, they don't shoot it particularly well, but what they do is force you into a whole bunch of turnovers so they can go lay it in the basket. Uh, and they're out playing one-on-zero or three-on-one basketball. Yep. And uh, that was the story of the game the other night. We, when we took care of it, we made shots. Uh, when we didn't take care of it, they made shots because they were shooting layups. Think about it this way. You had 47 possessions where you got a shot. 47 possessions. So 22 for 47. 22 for right. 47. Yep. You shot, uh, you shot just at 50 percent. Uh, right, just under 50 percent. But let's say you had half the number of turnovers that you had. That means you would have had somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 or 61 possessions with an opportunity to score. So again, and it's we not just that if your shooting percentages stay the same. Uh, you know, if, if so, then you're, you're looking at 28 for 60, somewhere in that ballpark. But it's their points off your turnovers that go down. Which, yeah, right. They had 28 points off of your 27 turnovers. So you, you take theirs away and give them to, your, to you, and, you know, things, things are very different. Yep. Star of the game for middle that night, Jared Coleman-Jones, 
16 points, 11 rebounds, and six assists. And that was the second uh, of three of games. Three game, second in three games that he had a, a double double. And, you know, I had him on the post game show, and he, he talked about a lot of the the things he does to get ready for ball games now and and how it's really made a difference uh, in him as you as his coach what have you seen different in his approach and then his execution within games i think two things i think one is just uh more minutes he's just now starting to have logged a bunch of minutes he's he's uh you know deandre dishman as we've talked about plenty of times is you know, last year's a 25-year-old, seventh-year senior, and now he's just more comfortable being out there and and really just starting to understand he doesn't have to make spectacular plays over and over and over in order to stay on the floor. You know, sometimes when you're a, a 8, 10, 12, 15-minute backup, you want to make the most of your minutes so you get more minutes. You know, you want to make a, a great play. You want to make the basket. You want to make a, a great assist. You, and all of a sudden, you gamble. You take a bad shot. You force something that's not there. And you play worse than, than you would have had you just uh, taken what the, the defense gives you or what the game gives you. And I think Jared's starting to just be comfortable but also simplifying things. Uh, you know, he's got real good feet, mobility, and dexterity. And uh, at times, he'd try to make sure – he showed all of it in one possession. That's right. <laughs> and he started to just slow down a little bit, playing closer to the basket, using his 6'10", 250 frame. And uh, you watch his shooting percentage has gone up. Outside of that game, I think he had five turnovers. No, that was the uh, Sam Houston game. Right, he, he, he had three turnovers. Uh, there that night. Yeah. Uh, but he, he's uh, playing close to the basket, so his, his turnovers are, are trending down. His shooting percentage trending up, and now you know not to uh, you know foreshadow moving ahead, but with the New Mexico State game as well. Yeah. In three of the last four games, he's gotten double doubles. You you guys spent a lot of time in the meeting room after the UTEP game, the next morning uh, watching film. Then you had to turn the page pretty quickly to start to prepare, but th- there's a, there's an accountability factor that that goes along with the players, you know, you can give them the plan. They've got to execute it, take care of the basketball. How did you all deliver that message? Uh, you know, you, you, you can't really beat them down in that moment uh, because you're going to play 48 hours later. And the good thing was uh, that looking at the way UTEP plays in New Mexico State, it, it wasn't all that different. Right. You know, both teams really are going to guard you hard, be physical, tough, rebound it. And so we, we kind of got a do-over, um, you know, just a short time after. And uh, I thought our guys did a good job of seeing why we had so many turnovers, why we shot it well when we did, and uh, knowing that's what we needed to do, um, you know, two days later. I tell you, and it was a heck of a contest. Great crowd uh, in Las Cruces. Um, and you guys came out, hit a couple of baskets early. And it, was, it, was, it wasn't quite the roller coaster we saw at UTEP, but this thing went down to the last five minutes. Uh, Trey Green, who is our guest tonight, had his best night ever as a Blue Raider uh, so far. I'll put it that way. And uh, More to come. More to come. And uh, Jared Coleman-Jones, another double-double. So three double-doubles within four games. And, you know, the, the UTEP game, quite honest, you guys – at about the 10-minute mark, they had that game under control. This ball game went down to the last media timeout, not knowing which way it was going to go, and they were able to make a couple of shots. They had a kid who made three threes in a matter of – scored 10 total points in a matter of about three or four minutes. And, three and, or four and, possessions. Yeah, and, and some, you know, something is going to happen in a game for one team or the other to, to take control of it, and that's what happened. It got late into that one before that happened. Yeah, we, we played uh, really well for a long stretch. Uh, we, we came out of the locker room, we were down eight, and they made a three on their first possession in transition to go down 11. And then uh, over the next really about 12 minutes, uh, we went from down to up three. And uh, you look at that, that uh, stretch, 
it was uh, in large part due to ball care. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the things we were talking about our team this morning is uh, we had two turnovers over a long stretch. And so, again, you, you watch our shot quality, the way we were playing offense. We were getting good looks. Uh, Trey was obviously, obviously making a lot of shots. So, with five to go, we're up 53-50. Uh, and then uh, we had some defensive lapses uh, on some – uh, things that you just can't get wrong, particularly yeah. at that point in the game. And we've said to our guys a lot, and I think this is true any year with any team, usually you watch uh, things at the end of the game. It's, it's often uh, not just spectacular plays that allow one team to win it. It's usually a few mistakes uh, that cost the team that lost. Yeah. And it's just the winning team took advantage of the mistakes. Yep. They and got the lead. You guys – put them at the free throw line, forced them to make free throws, and to their credit, they did. And uh, they ended up getting uh, the win. It ended up being 11, but it was about a five-point game, to be honest. Yeah, it, it was within, you know, a two one or two possession game. And then, you know, like you just said, credit them. They made their free throws. We, yep. we just started uh, fouling them. They made them and came down and got to get quick twos or quick threes, and, and we didn't make them. And, and all of a sudden, the, the scoreboard doesn't reflect how close the game was. But – uh, proud of our effort, and when our execution matches that effort, uh, the results will be in our favor. Absolutely, and it won't be long. This team is getting there uh, quickly right now. All right, we will take a break. We've got a special guest coming up from the Middle Tennessee State University College of Education. That as we continue with Nick McDevitt live here on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. You buy something because you found it at a low price, and soon you realize it's no bargain because you really needed something better. It happens all the time, especially with car insurance. But the good news is you can get the right coverage at the right price. Just talk to me, State Farm Agent Bud Morris. I'll help you get the right coverage at a price that's right for you. Call me at 893-1417 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I'm Bud Morris, providing insurance and financial services. Nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity that could have changed your life. Maybe you're just graduating high school or are working and need to earn a degree to advance your career. Or you aspire to be a leader and a graduate degree can make that happen. Whether you're just starting out or retooling for the future, Middle Tennessee State University can help you get there. MTSU, the University of Opportunities. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and makes the competition speechless. Greatness starts here with a built Ford Tough F-150 at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GVWR. Las Casas Drugs is a proud sponsor of Blue Raider Athletics, located at 4702 Las Casas Pike, just minutes from Murfreesboro. Las Casas Drugs strives to provide all of your pharmaceutical needs in that hometown atmosphere you deserve. Family owned and operated, Las Casas Drugs offers free delivery, immunizations, drive through window, gift shop, merchandise, and medication management programs. Come by and see how we can make a difference. And go Blue Raiders! Blue Raider fans, with more local brews than ever before, you are sure to find a local favorite this season in the Blue Raider Beer Garden. Enjoy the thrill of the game at the Blue Raider Beer Garden and try our selection of brews from Cedar Glade Brews, May Day Brewery, or Life is Brewing. All available for your tasting pleasure in the so Blue there, Raider Beer you can Garden hear me, right? of Section D in the Murphy okay. Center. Thank you, Cedar Glade Brews, May Day Brewery, and Life is Brewing for your support of MTSU Athletics. MT Dining is eating made easy. About 30 With more than 19 like dining that. locations, okay. you will never run out of variety on campus. Whether it's Chick-fil-A, <clears throat> Subway, or Starbucks, we've got the brands you love right here. Need a quick snack <clears throat> or scantron? Stop by one of the six pods on campus and try out MT Dining's new Farm to Fork experience. Farmer's Market, now open. Located in the Student Union. Visit mtdining.com for more information or visit our office in the Keithley University Center, room 202. Five, four, three, two, one. Mic's up. Welcome back into the Boulevard tonight for Nick McDevitt Live as we continue along. Tonight's show brought to you in part by the Lee Company. Blue Raider fans get ahead of the game with the best home services team in town. 
For your heating, air conditioning, plumbing, electrical, and home improvement needs, Lee Company, the team to call, 615-867-1000 or online at LeeCompany.com and hope you did not have to call them for any bursted pipes uh, after last week. Proud to have uh, with us the, uh, the dean of the college of education here at Middle Tennessee State University, and that would be Naportia T. Cohn. If you would, give her a nice round of applause. Welcome her today. And Naportia, how are you? I am doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. good. I'm doing good. Uh, Naportia came to Middle from Kennesaw State, where she was rose from an assistant professor of science education to professor and served as chair of the Department of Elementary and Early Childhood Education and an interim associate dean for undergraduate studies. Yes. And, you know, like a lot of times we'll, like when Trey Green comes up here in a minute, one of the questions I'll ask him is, what enticed you to come to Middle Tennessee? So, mm -hmm. Naportia, what enticed you <laughs> to come to Middle Tennessee to be the dean of the College of Education? Well, I was just so impressed um, with the relationship that MTSU has with the community. Um, I'm impressed with the fact that we are amongst the top three educator preparation programs um, within the state of Tennessee. And it was my goal um, to continue on that trajectory, to continue to figure out ways to empower families, students, and the community. And I'm just excited. I'm excited about partnership. I'm excited about listening to stakeholders and what they think about the college and how we can move it forward in a, a positive direction. I, I would dare anyone in this building tonight to uh, not have a connection to a teacher who got their degree at Middle Tennessee. Absolutely. My immediate connection, I have a sister. She now teaches high school in yes. Spring Hill. Mr. Palmer was a teacher. He was in the College Mr. of Palmer. Education. Uh, everybody here has done that. As a matter of fact, what was the first name of this university? State Teachers College yes. at Murfreesboro. And, and since then, more teachers have been supplied to our the educational workforce in Tennessee from middle than anywhere else. And yes. that's something we're all very, very proud of. So am I. So you all have another phrase that you use a lot that not only is it the College of Education, mm -hmm. it's the College of Difference Makers. Yes. Tell me why, and I, I think I know why, but, but you all, there's, there's, you put out a lot of Difference Makers we do. every year. We do. Um, we're calling the College of Difference Makers because that is our top priority. We believe that every educator, librarian, um, counselor that we put out, they're difference makers um, in today's society. Um, and we talk about that in our partnership with WKRN. If you had an opportunity to watch Take a Titan to School Day, um, we're out there in, in, the, in the community. We're out there at the schools um, really partnering and talking about what does it mean to be a difference maker. Um, how are our students difference makers? Because it's important to start empowering them at such a young age to let them know that they are important, they are valued, um, and that they can go out here and change the world and, and be a positive influence on everybody. Now, once students come and want to be teacher, librarian, counselor, yes. there are different uh, flexible options yes. of how they can go about getting their degree. Yeah. So one of the things that we believe in is really reaching our community, no matter where they're located. So we just don't believe in face-to-face -face instruction. We believe in hybrid instruction. We believe in online instruction as well. We believe in understanding what's the best option um, for our candidates in order to ensure that they have the experiences that they need in order to go out there and make a difference. You, uh, you put out a lot of teachers every year, as I mentioned, and and during their time at the university, and once they, they learn lessons here that they're gonna take out to whatever schools they're gonna be working at. And part of that, it's not only what goes on in the classroom, but engaging in the community. Yes. Um, so that goes back into our belief in partnering with our districts, right? Partnering with the community agencies as well. Um, we know that there is a teacher shortage going on, um, and it's, all, it's up to all of us to figure out how can we build that teacher pipeline? How do we start talking about the positives of teaching and the importance of teaching as well? And that goes back to us establishing and building on those important relationships in the community so that our students see that, so that they know that they're difference makers, number one, that they're needed um, in society, um, and that is their job to go back and to really give back to their communities. 
Um, so that's what we believe in. And today was day one, back in the classroom. It was day for one, <laughs> and they were excited to be back, and we were excited to be back on campus to welcome them. Well, I'll tell you, the, uh, the College of Education has a wonderful history of terrific leaders, and, uh, and the Porsche, you, you fall right in line with all of those, and we're so happy to have you here in Murfreesboro. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Good deal. And the Porsche Cone, the Dean of the College of Education Thanks here at Middle everybody. Tennessee State University. We'll take a time out. Trey Green is my guest when we come back. Come More on, Nick McDevitt live on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Go it's ahead. just a few cocktails at happy hour. There aren't any cops around. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I drink and drive all the time. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. Fans don't let fans drive drunk. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office, a division of the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security. Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance takes great pride in supporting and treating Middle Tennessee State University athletes, providing expert treatment of injuries to bones, joints, or muscles. TOA's team of orthopedic specialists can get you back in the game. Same-day appointments and walk-ins are welcome. Injured? Visit one of our many ortho-urgent cares, or to make an appointment, call 1-855-NEED-TOA or visit www.toa.com. TOA, the official team doctor for Blue Raider Athletics. I'm an after-luncher. Me? I'm a football game halftimer. I'm a whenever I can get five minutes, sir. Whenever you like to bank, the secure mobile app from Ascend has you covered. Transfer funds, apply for loans, even set spending limits. You know, do banking stuff right from your smartphone. I'm a bank in person -er. Is that okay? Yep. Just drop by one of our branches. Ascend Federal Credit Union. Open your account today. RJ Young is your playbook for more than just copiers. Our cutting edge solutions cover security systems, business phones, IT services, and beyond. We've teamed up with world-class partners to save you even more through bundling services, and our dedicated specialists are your personal coaches, making sure you always have the winning strategy. Don't forget our We Make It Right guarantee. Your satisfaction is our slam dunk. Schedule your free consultation now at rjyoung.com forward slash MTSU. The MTSU Alumni Association is proud of its more than 130,000 living alumni who are leading, teaching, entertaining, researching, flying, farming, nursing, and more worldwide. Every Blue Raider accomplishment adds value to your degree. Are you connected to the MTSU National Alumni Association? Visit mtalumni.com to share what you're doing. Update your information and see how you can be involved and inform. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Kroger always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Kroger app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. Plus, you can earn fuel points to save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. And with a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. So you can always save big every day with our savings and rewards. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Five, four, three, two, one. Mike's up. Welcome back into the Boulevard tonight as we continue along with Nick McDevitt live. And glad to have you along with us here. And really tickled to have uh, our, our, our player guest tonight, sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland, Trey Green. So, how y'all doing tonight? Good deal. 18 points on six made threes uh, at uh, New Mexico State. And, and uh, Trey, they're, they're, every player goes through struggles at times throughout a year. Uh, you never let shooting struggles bug you because you've seen them go in too many times. Uh, practice, the trip to Italy, you, you came in and provided instant offense. Did anything feel different the other night uh, about it uh, before they, you know, when they started going in? Uh, you know, when you work on something so much, it pretty much feels the same every time you do it. Um, but I think what felt different was after I seen that second shot go in, I was like, okay, I might be getting something tonight. Because when I make my first shot, I know, okay, it feels good, but I got to see a second one go in. 
Um, and I feel like that really boosted my confidence a lot to see that one going in. It helped me uh, throughout the rest of the night and ended up on my way to 18 points. Yep, and uh, you are built for tough player of the game on Saturday night. Um, talk a little bit about where this team is right now. Uh, everybody's role has kind of shifted a little bit, some more than others. Your role uh, has shifted, and there's, uh, and as Coach was talking about earlier, uh, you see the ball go in, and you get a get some playing time, and it keeps going in, and say, hey, I want to I want to do this, a little more of this, and you're no different from anybody else. You you want to continue to see more minutes and continue to to uh, you know to play and. And not only can he shoot, he is one of the best rebounders we have on this basketball team and great vertical leap. But, but I know it, it gives you – to see it go in gives you confidence in being able to get rebounds and, and be, be productive on the defensive end. That, that, that has to make you feel good. Uh, yeah, it definitely does. You know, uh, when you um, – what was the question yeah, like? Just talking about, you know, it, 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 the confidence level that and, and you want more, you want more once, once the good things start happening. Positive yeah. reinforcement. Mm, yeah, once the things start going your way, you know, it, everything falls in line pretty much, and it's just a straight line from that point on, you know. Um, it's just you work on something and you want to be better at it, you know, it just everything just helps you along the way. And teammates, obviously, we're not in a – good spot right now you know we have our couple losses that we've had but um I feel like as we go on we're getting more and more things right and that'll help us in these upcoming games and you know come out with a W yep I want to uh, rewind here a little bit and uh, because I meant to ask you this right off the top but uh, you're a really good high school player in in Baltimore and uh, and and what intrigued you about coming to Middle Tennessee um Honestly, when I first stepped foot on campus, I seen how beautiful it was. That was, like, one of my, like, first thoughts about it when I first seen it. Um, it's one of those movie campuses, if you really think about it. It's, it's, I always wanted to be a part of a big campus, um, and I saw that in MTSU. And when I first got here, met the coaches, they were all very welcoming, nice to me. Um, I love the facility. The gym looks amazing, and I, I like what they did with it uh, just recently last year, the new court. Um, but... The last school was also, it looked amazing too, but it was just, they were so welcoming to me, and I felt like it would just be a great spot for me to come and grow and contribute to the team. You found a, a group of brothers here, haven't I you? I definitely did. Yeah, it's last year's team and this year's team. I felt like last year's team, they, a bunch of older guys, I was the youngest guy coming in, they helped me, um, led me, um, and I learned a lot from those guys. And then coming in this year, um, I'm still one of the younger guys on the team. We got a bunch of older guys, I'm still learning. Um, and still growing together, and I'm just happy to be here. When, 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 one, when you're on the practice floor and in, on the game floor, um, are, are you one of those that subscribes, okay, if my shot's not going, I'm going to play harder on defense? Uh, can one it, – it, it, it's a true thing that one can help the other. Yeah, it's definitely true. Um, I feel like even if my shot is falling or if it's not falling, I'm going to play as hard as I can on defense. No you always what do. The, yeah. yeah. No matter what the circumstance is. Um, I always want to just go out there and contribute in any way I can, any shape, any way, shape, or form. Um, always want to just help the team win in any way possible that I can. As, as a student athlete, um, you know, you, we travel a lot. You go to different places. And uh, you have to – there's – with Dean Cohn here – uh, from the College of Ed, uh, we, we talk about the student part of being a student athlete. Uh, how was that transition for you, uh, knowing that there's, you know, a lot of times you're going to have to be studying in an airport or at a ho have a study hall at a hotel, things like that. Uh, I know the coaches provide a, an environment for that. And uh, did that come easy to you? Um. I, I would say it would. Uh, it, nothing in the academic side was really too challenging for me. I feel like that stuff kind of came natural to me. Um, and I feel like I'm naturally a good student. Everything, it's just pretty simple, to be honest. Not trying to, you know, have a big head about it or anything. But, um, yeah, that stuff, it, I feel like it was, it, was, it was a transition from high school. But I took some pretty challenging classes as well in high school. So I feel like the transition wasn't as hard as it would have been maybe for someone else. But, um, yeah, it definitely was a, you know, it was a transition. Yeah. But it was, well, yeah. What was your class schedule today? First day back for the spring semester. What, what, what classes did you have? Okay, so this morning I had Calc 1, 
Calculus at, one. Calculus one at eight a.m. and then what? I had to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eight a.m. class, and then I had to go to practice, and then I came back, and I had uh, what was it? It was engineering, introductory to engineering. Um, yeah, so I'm, I think I'm gonna like my classes pretty good. Well. Yeah. What what else? What else will you have on Tuesday Thursdays? Um, I will have safety of engineering that class. I will also have calc again, calculus again. Um, I think those are my only two. Yeah, well, my, yeah. So obviously you're kind of looking toward engineering of some sort. Yeah, my major is in mechanical engineering. Mechanical or or, or, what, or mechatronic? Have you seen the mechatronic stuff that's that's here at Middle? I have not. No. Wow. I mean, it's it's a cross between electrical and mechanical engineering, and uh, and it uh, has all kinds of. They do robots and all kinds of fun stuff. And uh, but uh, but you're going to do well whatever you do. There's no question about that. Uh, you talked about the campus and how pretty it was. Yeah. How pretty was it last week with all the snow? Oh, it was amazing. It was I, beautiful, I took so many it? pictures of it. Did yeah. you? <laughs> now, yeah. you did not go sledding back uh, by Greek Road, did you? I did not. I At did least not. No, none that you did not that anybody knows that about, no correct? Knows of, yes. <laughs> was that the word from the coaches, no, no, uh, no, no, uh, no sledding? Man, I haven't gone sledding. You would not catch me back there, so <laughs> – but yeah. you you may have watched. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, all it. right. What does this team need to do? This is a big week. You've got two home yeah. games. You got Jacksonville State coming in Wednesday, so it's a quick prep. You got a guy. Tomorrow's a huge practice for you guys, getting ready for Jacksonville State on Wednesday, and then FIU coming in here on Saturday. What does this team need to do to take that next step? Um, we really just need to stay together. Um, we see the progress that we have in the uh, in the games that we've had already. Um, and we got to just keep adding on and adding on and adding on, staying together and believing in one another. Um, and I feel like if we continue to do that, it will help us finally get over the hump and get that W versus W uh, in the conference. Well, he was part of uh, a team GPA that was right at the 3-0 mark. Uh, it did, was over. It ended up being over. But over 3-0 this past fall. And uh, one of my favorite guys on the team, he's normally quiet and just hardworking. But I'm so excited to see you have a great night uh, shooting the basketball, and let's see more of that, okay? I appreciate it, too. All right, that's Trey Green from Baltimore, Maryland, and he will be out there on Wednesday night as well. We'll take a timeout. Coach McDevitt rejoins me right after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. MT Dining is eating made easy. With more than 19 dining locations, you will never run out of variety on campus. Whether it's Chick-fil-A, Subway, or Starbucks, we've got the brands you love right here. Need a quick snack or scantron? Stop by one of the six pods on campus and try out MT Dining's new farm-to-fork experience. Farmer's Market, now open. Located in the Student Union. Visit mtdining.com for more information. Or visit our office in the Keithley University Center, room 202. And now for today's winning cash three and cash four numbers from the Tennessee Lottery. The first number is the number you just thought of. The second number is the number you would have picked. The third number is the day of your wedding anniversary. And the fourth number. They're only lucky numbers if you decide to play them. Cash three and cash four only from the Tennessee Lottery. Game changing fun. Please play responsibly. Roscoe Brown is proud to be a longtime supporter of MTSU Athletics and your locally owned HVAC and plumbing company for over 80 years. Roscoe Brown has been the trusted name for heating, cooling, and plumbing for Middle Tennessee homeowners and businesses. Call 888-MY-ROSCOE to schedule your HVAC or plumbing service today. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Roscoe Brown. People you know, a name you trust. Go Blue Raiders! Roscoe Brown. RoscoeBrown.com. City Auto Murfreesboro welcomes Mitsubishi to our dealership at 1015 Bridge Avenue off Old Fort Parkway. Visit our new showroom and see the new Outlander lineup with award-winning safety features and a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty. Named number one in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power. Plug into the Power and the Outlander. Plug in hybrid and take your tailgating to a whole new level. Shop City Auto online or in person and win with Mitsubishi. 
RJ Young is your playbook for more than just copiers. Our cutting edge solutions cover security systems, business phones, IT services, and beyond. We've teamed up with world-class partners to save you even more through bundling services, and our dedicated specialists are your personal coaches, making sure you always have the winning strategy. Don't forget our We Make It Right guarantee. Your satisfaction is our slam dunk. Schedule your free consultation now at rjyoung.com forward slash MTSU. You buy something because you found it at a low price, and soon you realize it's no bargain because you really needed something better. It happens all the time, especially with car insurance. But the good news is you can get the right coverage at the right price. Just talk to me, State Farm Agent Bud Morris. I'll help you get the right coverage at a price that's right for you. Call me at 893-1417 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I'm Bud Morris, providing insurance and financial services. Five, four, three, two, one. Mike's up. Welcome back into the Boulevard as we uh, head down the stretch uh, here on tonight's show. And Coach had Trey Green on. What a, what a great young man he is. And, and what you saw right here uh, was probably about three times more than he talks at, <laughs> at any one given time during the day. But he is such a class act. He's the best. He's He is a uh, – quiet reserved young man uh for the most part but um he he's uh his parents have done a terrific job uh raising a great young man he's the best yep and it's so good to see him have success it is he, yeah. he works really hard he really works hard at everything he does he's a an engineering major um uh, makes really good grades uh, works hard in the weight room. He's always in shape. He's he's in the gym all the time. Uh, you know, I know there for a while his, his shooting numbers. Uh, he was struggling to to see one go in, but he he has the ability to make shots. We we've seen it uh, through practices over the the year plus that he's been here. Obviously, he had some really nice games in Italy. Yep. Uh, our scrimmages, he played well. Uh, just once we got into regular season play, just kind of uh, went into a little bit of a slump, and then all of a sudden uh, it can kind of weigh heavy on you. It's kind of a gorilla on your back. Yep. Uh, you're trying to get it off, and uh, hopefully uh, seeing several go in the other night, uh, he can catch a stride here as we head in the se- – you know, we're in the second half of uh, – of the season. Well, it was nice to ask him some questions, and it's always fun to ask you five random questions, and it comes at this time of the show every week. Number one, uh, today is National Blonde Brownie Day. What is your favorite kind of brownie? Uh, I don't eat brownies, so <laughs> that's right because it's too much chocolate. Yeah, right? You're I, not, he's not I a don't, chocolate guy. It's the kind that I just. Well, give blonde to brownies way. might be that might be down your alley. Yeah, clearly, uh, Katie or Cooper will take it. We had, uh, had Dean Cohn on with us, and Wednesday is National Day of Education. So do you have a teacher that made a difference in your life? Oh, yeah. There were uh, two in particular. I was a history major in college at uh, UNC Asheville. Uh, my Uncle Ricky, uh, my dad's brother, was my uh, freshman year government teacher, and uh, a lady named Frances Ram- Ramsey uh, was my history teacher my sophomore year. So those two years, ninth grade history, basically government, and 10th grade history, uh, those two teachers are, are really the two that kind of got me pre- thinking about uh, that once I went to college. Yeah, my eighth grade civics teacher was one of those that I, I really, really enjoyed. Uh, same type of serious question here. Have you ever sang karaoke? And if you did, what was the song? Mm, I don't believe, I, I'm not, I'll listen to karaoke, well, I, I enjoy going to like a, a piano, dueling piano bar, yeah. or something like that. But uh, if you hear me sing, you'll know why I do not. If you were going to sing a song, what would, what would it be? Um, mm, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Oh, there's plenty to choose from. There, there, there are. Okay, you you came up in the video game era, uh, obviously playing the the basketball, all the different sports video games. What's your favorite non-sports video game? Mine was Asteroids and Space Super Invaders. Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, oh, great. Exactly. Uh, that, that's that's uh, this one's Cooper. That would be he, he, Cooper. He loves some uh, Super Mario Brothers. So, so we Cooper, what is your favorite video game, Katie? 
<laughs> the, the silent video. She all of a sudden she's quiet. Yeah, now. all of a sudden. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and speaking of our associate producers, Cooper and Katie, who are up here with us, uh, I'll ask all of you, three of you, this is the last of the random questions. What's your favorite Disney character? What is Cooper? your favorite Disney character, Coop? Mario. All right. What is your favorite? Princess Peach is her favorite. So Those aren't Disney. Th no. Y'all are talking about video games. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite Disney character? Oh, uh... Mickey. Mickey? Yeah. Uh, of course. That'd, that'd be a good one. It's an easy one. Favorite uh, thing at Disney World? That's a bonus question. Uh, Space Mountain. Space Mountain. The I, I, I kind of like the, I'm, I'm, you can probably, I, I kind of like the Country Bear Jamboree. And did you realize that Mac McAnally, who is part of Jimmy Buffett's band, has just re-recorded all of the music that will play at the Country Bear Jamboree? Really? Yeah. So How do you know that? It'll have his... I know things. It's what uh, random stuff, and that's why we have random. <laughs> it questions. is random. So there they are. We'll we'll take a break, our final break of the night, and be back to take a look at the week ahead with Coach right after this. It's Nick McDevitt live on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Hey, basketball fans, this is Coach McDevitt, and I want to talk some trash. No, not about the game. I want to talk about the litter problem on our roadways. Did you know that the Tennessee Department of Transportation spends over $23 million every year just to pick up litter? There's over 100 million pieces of litter on our roadways at any given time, making our state unsightly and unsafe. Litter harms our highways, waterways, even our wildlife. So let's do something about it. Don't litter, remind others not to, and report littering when you see it. We can beat litter, but only if we're all on the same team. Join the movement today. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and go Blue Raiders. Hi, this is Coach Nick McDevitt. Ascend Federal Credit Union is the proud sponsor and exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Visit Ascend's branch just off campus at 2316 East Main Street or any of their three other Murfreesboro locations. You can also keep track of your accounts and deposit checks on the go with Ascend's mobile app. For a complete list of services, ATMs, and locations, visit Ascend.org. Ascend is federally insured by the NCUA. The MTSU Alumni Association is proud of its more than 130,000 living alumni who are leading, teaching, entertaining, researching, flying, farming, nursing, and more worldwide. Every Blue Raider accomplishment adds value to your degree. Are you connected to the MTSU National Alumni Association? Visit mtalumni.com to share what you're doing. Update your information and see how you can be involved and informed. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Not feeling well and need to see a doctor? Find the care you need now at Ascension St. Thomas. We're here with 24-7 ER care, same-day care, and walk-in urgent care for broken bones, sprains, allergies, sore throats, and more. Visit ascension.org slash St. Thomas Care to get the right care at the right place at the right time. Serving Middle Tennessee State University, Murfreesboro, and surrounding communities. Five, four, three, two, one. Mike, the welcome back into the Boulevard for a final time tonight. Coach Nick McDevitt is uh, with us, and uh, Coach, the the week uh, a little bit different. Not a Thursday Saturday, but a Wednesday Saturday, and Jacksonville State uh, will be coming in. First time we played Jacksonville State in a long, long time. First time in a long time, uh, and uh, Ray Harper. We'll bring uh, yet another team into the Murphy Center. Yep. Uh, coach at Western Kentucky in the past. I believe he's been there for eight years now. I know. It, I know. Uh, and his teams are tough and rough and physical and really guard you. Uh, they're, they are really a really good uh, half-court defensive team. Uh, they make you work for catches, forget points. Uh, they, they just really uh, are hard on you on that end of the floor. They're ten and nine overall, two and two in in league play. Uh, they are they've won four road games uh, this year in 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 all. So they they are a bit of a tested team. They are, and uh, you you have to take advantage of the opportunities when they make mistakes. You got to take advantage. Uh, you've got to be able to get clean defensive rebounds and push in transition. Uh, if if you're uh, playing kind of slow tempo uh, and playing trying to play half court offense the whole night. Uh, you're playing right into their strengths, which is half-court defense. They're they're uh, they're a tough bunch. They really get on the offensive glass. You could tell. I bet their practices are 
are just rough and physical and you need uh, helmets and, and shoulder pads uh, because they, they really get after you. Uh, FIU will be here Saturday afternoon. They are 7-12 and 12 overall, but also 2-2 two and two in the league. 2-2 two and two in the league, and, uh, you know, neither team has really got breathing room when you're playing that style of play. You can be up 15 and watch it be tied in a hurry, and but the same is true the other direction. You can be down 15, 18 points and find yourself right back in the ball game uh, quickly because of the, the helter-skelter and the pressing that they do. Uh, UTEP uh, was up 15 with 10 to go and uh, lost that game to FIU, if I remember correctly, uh, you know, two or three games ago. Yep. So that will be on Saturday at 5 o'clock, the Jacksonville State game, Wednesday night at 6.30. Yep, that's correct. All right. We need folks out there. Come on out. The weather's good. We'll see you at the Glass House on Wednesday night. Coach, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. That is it for tonight. Talik Pratt has been our studio producer. And for Coach Nick McDevitt, Chip Walter saying thanks for being with us. Good night from the Boulevard on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Clear.